so I've opened up my uh, my my Excel spreadsheet that I've got on that folder, the 3D printed invoice. And what I'm going to do is paste my report down into this bottom field right here. I do this just so that I have a full copy of my report associated with the invoice. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save a copy of this thing. And I like to do last name and then date so that I know exactly what's going on. I'm going to put my own last name in there. I'm going to do Seacrest Demo 923. That's my naming convention that I like to use. So that at a, at a glance, as I'm going through there, I can figure out whose is this and when was I doing this. So I'm going to do Seacrest Demo 923. And then I'm going to take a couple critical bits of information out of this report. I paste it in here so I have all this stuff to look at. If I'm filling this out, Seacrest, Kyle J. You guys don't need to know my BSU ID number, so I'm just going to put in question marks. But you'll have your, stu your the, the student or patron who's doing this, you'll have them fill out their name, you'll have them fill out their BSU ID number. And we actually added a link right here, just in case you run into somebody who doesn't know it. I've got a link that takes you straight to the page where you can look up your BSU ID number in case you don't know. So they have no excuse for not providing their ID number. Because but our, our budget secretary, Melanie Smith, can't fill them for their model if she doesn't have their student ID number. She has no handy mechanism for looking that up. Excuse me. So you'll get their name, you'll get their student ID number, you'll paste a copy of this 3D print time estimator report into the bottom here, and then it's going to ask you for a couple of pieces of information. It's going to want to know how many cubic inches of powder you used and how many milliliters of binder that you used. So we're going to extract that information. Most of the time, most of the time, people have done their models in inches, just in case they haven't. We actually set up a conversion factor, like if they did theirs in centimeters. Instead of having to pull out a calculator and do it, we can plug in either cubic inches of powder or cubic centimeters of powder. Most of the time, they do it in inches. So let's see. In this case, let me look down here and find it. Did you say cubic feet? <laughs> cubic inches. Cubic inches. Cubic inches or cubic centimeters. I've got it set up to where you can put either in. All right. Here we go. Total volume of parts. This is the one that I want. Total volume of parts. And in this case, it says 0 0.13 cubic inches. So I'm going to plug that in, 0 0.13. And as it goes, it's just going to tally this stuff up for me. This is going to be a tiny model, not very expensive at all. And then how many milliliters of binder? And it actually gives you two very slightly different numbers depending on whether you're doing this as monochrome or whether you're doing it in color. We're doing a color one. It says estimated clear binder usage in color mode, 9.9 .9 milliliters. So I'm going to put 9.9 .9 in for binder. Ooh, we're up to a whopping buck 63. They'll get way more expensive than this most of the time. If you feel like being nice, one of the things you can mention if somebody's just got a massive model and it's like, oh my god, this is going to be 150 bucks, you know, if they haven't remembered to do things like hollow out their model, <laughs> you can save yourself lots and lots of money on a large model if you remember to hollow it out. Because uh, it'll this if you if you build it with no holes in it and it's trapped a bunch of loose powder inside, it's just going to build it like that. We're going to charge you for it because you're actually taking all that expendable away with you. <laughs> So if you feel like being nice, you can tell people, hey, maybe 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 poke a hole in the bottom of that and come back, okay? Because it'll get pricey in a hurry. So we've got a bunch, we're up to a buck sixty-three so far in this tiny little demo model. The other thing is we've got a section here. The first section is for printing. You'll put in binder and powder for infiltration, and it gives you four different options here. It talks about wax dipping. It says salt water on here, which is to say the Epsom salt. Color bond and then the strength max, which almost nobody ever uses. But I've got a cost coefficient for each of these. Most of the time, if they don't want to do anything here, you won't check anything. Most of the time, you're going to end up chicken wax dipping. And that's going to add exactly a quarter to our total. <laughs> and then it's going to display our, our grand total down here. So we'll put, their, we'll put their report in, we'll fill it in, and they'll be looking over your shoulder, and we'll go, OK, it's going to cost a buck 88. Are you OK with the price on that? <laughs> and in this case, they'd probably be like, yeah. $1.88 is just fine. 
you'll sometimes see them be like, I got a two hundred dollar bobble, and it's like, well, okay, here are your options. You want to try some stuff and come back? You'll have that conversation with them sometimes. Right? If they're happy with what they see here, we will save a copy of that report. this same folder, this C printer folder that I've got a shortcut to on the desktop. And it's important that you save it into that because I've actually got, I've actually mapped that to my computer in my office to where I can print out copies of this and take it over to Melanie and do all of that stuff. So I'll save them in here. And if I've got any weird notes or anything like that, I'll put printing notes or things like that down there in the spreadsheet. Okay. But if, we, if, we're, if we're cool with our invoicing, and we're cool with our scale, and we're cool with our color, then we're finally ready to print. So I'm going to close out of that, close out of my time estimation. And now the most bone simple part. Actually printing your 3D model is the easiest part of the whole process. You just go to 3D print, and you get this dialog box right here. You could start it on a specific layer in your build if you want to. Most of the time, there's no reason you'd want to do that. You just print the entire build, click OK. And if I had any maintenance issues, or I were low or out of any expendables right here under printer status, this is where it would tell me. If I needed to replace any of my print heads, it would say so. If I needed to add binder or powder, it would say so. If there were any sort of maintenance cues that I was behind on, it would yell at me here. And until I at least said, don't bug me right now, I'll do it later, it won't let you start the job. Also, notice right here where it says online in the blue window right here. If I have this machine offline for any reason, it would say so, and it would actually show me an analog of whatever's on that screen, which is kind of cool because that means that even if I were doing this from a remote location, I could be I could be in another building, in fact, and know, hey, what's all going on with my printer? I could call up and be like, guys, what's up with the 3D printer? I'm setting a job. We don't do that here, but it'll tell you what's going on. Also, when I just tap that button right there, it'll pull it back to online in a second, as you can see that it did. But if I'm online and I've got no maintenance queues and I don't need to add anything, I can go ahead and click print. And it says initiate build. And I bet if we look over here at this console, sure enough, as per the settings I put in here, it's executing another fill bed command. And it's going to take about five minutes to do that. And then as soon as it finishes its last spreading layer on the fill bed, it's going to go into printing layer one of however many layers this model is. If I recall correctly, what this thing take about 37, 38 minutes to print? Is that what we saw? Yes. I expect to see the same thing here. Um, so it's going to go through that print process, and then, like I said, we're going to have that about hour and a half of pure time, where it'll have a timer counting down, basically saying, "Don't get in here and mess with this yet." So you know, this afternoon, I could pull this model out if I wanted to, but this basically takes us back to where we were in the first place. Does, does it tell you how many layers? It does. It does. And of course, can, can you can you ever calculate like four minutes a layer, or is it just depend on how how many models are in the bed? That's a really good question. That is a really good question. And I I have always been so busy and frazzled that I've never sat down and done the arithmetic. If you have if you have both the time and the inclination, you feel like crunching those numbers and letting me know. I'd actually love to know that. If there seems to be a consistent average time per layer, or if it really is heavily dependent on how full the build tray is. I, I would love to know that. Again, part of it, if you were to take a peek through here, you'd see there's a there's a second after it finishes spreading where it spins its speed roller, and there's a second after it goes back where it preps the next layer of powder. So a bunch of it is, a bunch of the process per layer is actually spent doing other things than spreading. It's spent doing prep and cleaning. Again, as filthy as it gets, it actually tries to clean all the, the, the gunky stuff with the ink cartridges every single time. I can't remember, did I explain what this window film is doing on here? This is actually an aftermarket thing that we added, this, this slightly reflective window covering. And all this is is just like energy efficient window tinting for a house that we covered up this, this space with. This thing's actually got an optical sensor inside it that it uses to help tell if the print cartridge is clean. And there is so much ambient light bouncing around in this room that sometimes its, it's initial auto alignment scan will fail as it starts to run a job. And so we actually put a little tinting on this thing just to keep that from being an issue. 
So you can still, it makes it darker, but you know, while the camera's not picking it up because of the reflection, you can still take a look through this window and see what's going on. Well, that's the basic process right there. Let me think if there's anything, some things that I know we didn't cover. We didn't actually go through the process of replacing a print head, and that's something you'll do periodically. We didn't talk about changing the binder, and we didn't talk about adding powder. So let me take just a hot second. I'm going to interrupt this thing.